conventional approach to conventional challenges. A very unique topic for discussion in the times that we are right now in. With all this in the backdrop, I would like to open this very important conversation with Dr. Frank Richter, founder and chairman of Horasis. Frank, good afternoon. Thank you for joining from Switzerland. As an international thought leader on economics and poverty, uh, monetary po uh, policy, what are some of the macro and the microeconomic effects of COVID-19 on the world stage? And more importantly, what are the possibilities of us to return to a new normal? Thanks so much, Priya, for inviting me and uh, all of us for this very important conference. Let me start to say that I'm very mm -hmm. sad to see you know, the dramatic developments in this world with 200,000 people so far having lost uh, their life. And uh, my condolences are with um, all those families who um, lost a beloved. Mm -hmm. I think the corona crisis will go on um, until we really found waxing and this might take another year or so uh, talking about the economy we won't really go back to normal anytime soon and we might even enter um, something similar to a great recession great recession uh, we experienced um, uh, more than uh, 100 years ago uh, you know starting in the us um, and um, moving um, all the planet all countries into a very deep economic crisis uh, there's actually some hope that um, uh, everything will be back very soon. Some economists talk about a V-shape uh, recovery, something about uh, a U-shape. I think it's more like an L-shape. So we are down and we won't really go up for uh, a very long time. Uh, we see that supply chains are disrupted all around the world and uh, it's almost impossible to produce a very complex product anymore, like for example a car, um, or a, a machine, because we, in this globalized world, um, uh, get supplies from China, from Latin America, from the US, and uh, all these supply chains are um, uh, disrupted. Um, thinking ahead, um, I believe um, the uh, corona crisis um, is showing us uh, the very uh, best of human mankind and the very worst of human mankind. Why do I say this? Um, let me start with uh, the worst of human mankind. We see that a lot of uh, people are starting to point fingers and we see a bit of uh, the Machiavellian mindset. Um, when we say, you know, the, the virus comes from overseas. Some people talk about um, a China virus or an Italian virus. And, um, you know, we immediately close borders and we also close our mental borders. And uh, there's a lot of finger pointing. And uh, that's what I mean by the Machiavellian mindset, uh, which is now um, uh, governing the world. And um, basically, the, the end justify, uh, justifies the means. But it's also maybe the very best of human mankind coming up uh, to the fore, because we see a lot of solidarity. Uh, people help each other. People join hands. And um, we might actually, in these uh, times of crisis, just sit back and think uh, what we can change. For example, the economic system, which is very much dominated by short-term decision-making. Um, think about the so-called Anglo-Saxon model, where we usually uh, have a transaction at short time, a short term to, for example, push the, uh, the stock price. Um, laying uh, off um, people might uh, lead to a higher stock price. And this, uh, the economic systems, which reigned so far, um, the Anglo-Saxon system, and maybe with COVID, and as we are sitting back and can reflect, we might um, uh, come up with uh, a new economic system, which is more long-term oriented, more based on principles. And um, so uh, COVID might be something even like a blessing in disguise for the economy on the very long term, because we are redefining the principles of um, the economy. Um, what is also happening now, right now is that uh, COVID is accelerating the digitalization of our companies, of our organizations. Digitalization already took place for um, the last few years, but now with COVID, um, it's um, much, much faster. We are uh, almost forced to digitalize. 
and uh, to speed up uh, the adoption, ad adoption of uh, digital systems in our economic structures. Um, and this um, might have um, quite um, severe consequences for the future of work because a lot of people might lose uh, their jobs. Unemployment is already on the rise right now. And with digitalization, it may, will be much, much faster. And um, uh, lifetime employment uh, is already done. And um, uh, fixed employments um, might be more the exception than the rule. And we might all work um, uh, from our home in the future being freelancers, but we are not employed by large uh, companies anymore. So the, the future of work is very bleak on the one hand. Digitalization is giving us a lot of opportunities, but um, also there are a lot of challenges. And um, unemployment will uh, eventually also lead to social unrest. People will go to the streets because they lose their jobs. Similar to what we have seen during the Great uh, Recession of 29. And uh, we've already seen last year um, uh, major um, uh, unrest in the streets of Paris, for example, the Yellow West movements right before COVID. And um, uh, we see that uh, the middle class is shrinking because not everybody is, uh, is in part of globalization. So there's basically a divide between the haves and the haves not. And uh, in industrialized countries like Europe, in America, but also merchant countries like India, China, and Africa. And um, yeah, that's um, uh, some concern that uh, on the very long term, we will see social unrest because people will go to the streets. And um, uh, so with the future of work, people losing job unemployment on the rise. So it's a very uh, dramatic uh, picture. I would like to give some hope as well. And yeah. uh, you put it nicely uh, in the announcement of the conference, saying we need hope and we need um, to, to think positive. And um, I think, you know, we as humans, we all got the, um, the forces, uh, the power uh, to look ahead and to find solutions. Um, and um, I think we, we should uh, continue. We have to be creative and we have to, we have to work together. And uh, I think what we need more is really dialogue, uh, something we are doing today as we are bringing together people from all around the world, thinking about um, the future of work, um, the post-COVID economy, um, solidarity, and uh, how we can all make this um, uh, planet a better uh, place to, to live on. And that's uh, a bit the, um, uh, my vision for hope I would like to, to give to everybody. Thank you. What was your most impactful personal learning during this pandemic? And what is your advice to the viewers? First of all, I very much um, uh, enjoyed this conversation, you know, getting the insight from uh, all of you. Um, uh, from you, Christoph, as you to work with patients. Um, from you, Acho, as you're an entrepreneur, uh, the, the, the Bollywood stars and the Bollywood uh, producers. Um, I would like to give um, three, um, make three observations. First of all, we have to reconnect with Mother Earth. What Arushi said in the beginning is very important. We shouldn't um, go back to our um, um, uh, attitudes we had uh, pre-corona, but we should reflect what we can do better. And um, I think the connection with Mother Earth is so important. And personally, myself, I'm doing it um, or try to do it. I spend a lot of time in my garden. Um, I do a bit of uh, yoga and and uh, it's a bit like zen you know like connecting with uh, mother earth and um, i wish it to everybody you know doing this and to you mankind that we can reconnect with mother earth um, secondly um, i believe that we need um, a new uh, multi-stakeholder approach where um, uh, the politicians um, the business people and civil society can work together I believe we are all in our silos and there's no real connection from, poli from the politicians um, to the people. Um, maybe from the business people uh, to the politicians, uh, uh, neither. So we have to uh, reconnect all these different groups in these times of crisis and um, try really to engage in dialogue. And lastly, as uh, we had uh, all the Bollywood uh, stars here uh, at this call, I think storytelling is very important. Uh, storytelling in uh, these times of challenges and crisis, and uh, to see that really there's hope at the horizon, there's light at the end of the tunnel. And that's also, and you asked me, Priya, about my own personal takeaway and observation. 
that's what I also try to do myself, you know, like uh, engage with people, talk about best practices, um, storytelling, and uh, yeah, Bollywood has a very important uh, role to play. Thank you.